Well, good morning and welcome to the morning prayer this morning. But this morning we're not following the readings that we've been following. We're having a break from Joshua because today is the day when the church gives thanks for God's wisdom in giving us the memorial of the Lord's Supper, the way that we remember uh, regularly the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So today we especially give thanks for God's wisdom and his understanding of our human state knowing that we need sometimes uh, physical practical memorials of his grace in our lives psalm 147 alleluia how good it is to make music for our god how joyful to honor him with praise the lord builds up jerusalem and gathers together the outcasts of israel he heals the brokenhearted and binds up all their wounds he counts the number of stars and calls them by their names Great is our God, and mighty in power. His wisdom is beyond all telling. The Lord lifts up the poor, but casts down the wicked to the ground. Make, sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the lyre, who covers the heavens with the clouds and prepares rain for the earth, who makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve our needs. He gives the beasts their food and the young ravens when they cry. He takes no pleasure in the power of a horse, no delight in human strength, but the Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their trust in his steadfast love. Sing praise to the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. He has established peace in your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends forth his command to the earth and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool and scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He casts down his hailstones like morsels of bread. Who can endure his frost? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and judgments to Israel. He has not dealt so with any other nation. They do not know his laws. Hallelujah. We give thanks to God for his uh, mercy to us. He lifts up the poor. Uh, he, le he takes pleasure in those who fear him, who put their trust in him. Let's be those who give pleasure to God today. Deuteronomy 8, verses 2 to 16. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The clothes on your back did not wear out, and your feet did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a parent disciplines a child, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Therefore, keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat the bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and living them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made waters flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. 
God led the people of Israel through good times and bad times that he might discipline them and teach them. He leads us through good times and bad times that he may teach us. Let's be those who learn the lessons he teaches and keep his ordinances. 1 Corinthians 10, 1-17 I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptised into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock which followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples to us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolatrous as some of them did, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up early to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us, on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful. He will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide a way out, so that you will be able to endure it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idols. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless is it not the sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break is it not sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Communion reminds us not only of our relationship with God and our dependence on him, just as in the wilderness they depended on the Lord to provide their food. He humbled them by providing for them. The cross humbles us. We acknowledge that we are entirely dependent on God. And as we break bread together, we are reminded that what we eat is provided by the Lord and our salvation is provided by him. Therefore, we should live humbly before him living righteously as he commands and it also reminds us of our relationship with each other we take part in one bread for we all part so we are reminded that we are part of one body lord jesus christ we thank you that in this wonderful memorial you have given us the memorial of your passion grant us so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of your redemption for you are alive and reign with the father in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever amen let us pray with confidence as our saviour has taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen.